Huh. This headline in Politico caught our attention. It says, we've all enabled the situation. Democrats turn on Biden's inner sanctum post-debate. Carl Rove and Harold Ford Jr. I, I just want to play a little bit more for Car from Carl Bernstein from Watergate fame, of course. Watch here. They are adamant that what we saw the other night, the Joe Biden we saw, uh, is not an, a one-off, that there have been 15, 20 occasions in the last year and a half when the president has appeared somewhat as he did in that horror show uh, that we witnessed. In the last six months particularly, there has been a marked incidence of cognitive decline uh, and physical infirmity. So, Carl, was this the biggest kept secret in Washington? And, you know, Carl Bernstein often will say that this is this or that is worse than Watergate. And this actually might be. Yeah, look, it was a badly kept secret. And, and, and look, remember, we have a large majority of the American people who think that he's too old uh, to be president. And that was months ago. That was when this race began. And look, they can go out and re reassure the donors all they want. But they also are trying to reassure elected officials, party leaders, activists, and voters. And the voters, they've already lost. 70% plus of the American people think he shouldn't run again, that he's too old and in decline. And that includes a significant number of Democrats. So, you know, the, the, it's not just the, the donors that count. It's the, ultimately the voters. And the voters are making their decision that he's way too old. And they made that some time ago. All right. So, Harold, uh, we'll ask where you stand this morning on all of this while we listen to a few Democrats on Joe Biden, uh, starting with Andy Bashir of Kentucky. Listen. It was a rough night. The president's admitted that it was a rough night. I think what you're getting to here is that his decision not only impacts who's going to serve in the White House the next four years, uh, but who's going to serve in the Senate, who's going to serve in the House, and it will have implications for decades to come. I think the campaign's got to listen to people. And mm -hmm. by the way, I think the campaign needs to listen to us. So what should they be hearing from Democrats like you this morning? Harold. Well, good morning, and thanks for having me on. I think uh, Carl's point there that with the, with the white board about voters uh, is something that uh, many, at least in the White House, don't seem to be as attuned to. They seem to be more willing and wanting to Reassure, don't, uh, reassure the donor base. And I think the donor base is important, but voters are far more important. And then, two, Mike, quickly there, look at the down ballot implications here. Uh, are we willing to take a gamble to lose the Senate and the House? Uh, we, we have the Senate Democrats that we don't have the House. There seems to be an opportunity, a pathway uh, to a majority there. Do you take that risk? And when you consider uh, a Supreme Court that is 6 3, that could go 7 2, 8 1. Uh, if you lose the White House and there are one or two vacancies uh, or one or two openings on the Supreme Court for whatever set of reasons, um, the, the American people cannot unsee what happened last Thursday. Uh, I've known Joe Biden a long time. I went to college with Bo. We, he was a year ahead of me at Penn, and we were great pals. Uh, I traveled to the Middle East when I was in Congress with then Senator Biden, one of the smartest, most thoughtful patriots uh, I ever had that chance to serve with and know. But we're at a different point uh, in his life and a different point in his service journey. Uh, and when you consider the implications, uh, if we take this gamble, uh, I think it's something we as Democrats have to think long, hard, and seriously about. Uh, and, and if I were Joe Biden and I was advising him, he needs right away not only to, to do an interview or to, to should say go to the, the press room and do a press conference, he should sit down with Brett Baer, do an hour-long, long, long form interview. He should sit down with other journalists and answer the tough questions and demonstrate to the country that indeed, if it were a one-off last Thursday, prove it was a one-off. Yeah. Well, when you when you decline the Super Bowl interview, which is usually pretty softball, I mean, I think that's hard to believe. As much as I would love for Brett to get that interview um, on Michigan, a state that's one, a state that Harold knows well. But Carl, as I understand it, Biden's path to 270 really had to include Michigan and 270 electoral votes. And this was in Politico just the other day that. Governor Whitmer had phoned with more of an unambiguous SOS to relay that Michigan, in the wake of the debate, was no longer winnable for Biden. Now, she came out later and said, anyone who claims I would say that we can't Michigan is, can't win Michigan is full of the S word, let's go. But what do you think about Michigan? And if, if that's true, no wonder the donors are in revolt. Yeah. Well, let's step back for a second. Uh, there are three battleground states in the Southwest and uh, the Sun Belt. Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia. And in those states, Donald Trump leads Joe Biden 
by between four and six, nearly six points outside the margin of error in the, in the average of all the recent polling. The, mid, the, the Great Lakes states of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania are a lot closer. Uh, but it was two points in, in the real clear politics average in, in Pennsylvania, one-tenth of one percent in Wisconsin, and three-tenths of one percent in Michigan. If, if in order to win, uh, Joe Biden has to take all three of those states and win the rest of the country except for what Donald Trump won last time around, and he can also lose Nevada, Miss, uh, Nevada Arizona, and Georgia. But if he loses any one of them, and he's ahead by one-tenth of a percent in Wisconsin before the debate and ahead by three-tenths of a percent in Michigan before the debate. What happens if those numbers drop a couple of points? He can. There is no path to victory with that, that says he can lose any one of those three states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, or, or Wisconsin. He loses any one of them, he's out. And he was barely ahead mm. in, in two of the three and, and inside the margin of error on the third. You know, It's a tough picture. Harold, uh, perhaps Jerry Baker nailed it again in the Wall Street Journal with this. He said the Democrats deserve Biden, even if the country doesn't. We should have the opportunity to say what we think about a party and a president who, even as they lectured us for four years about the importance of honesty and the sanctity of democracy, were engaged in an extended act of deceit that itself represents pure contempt for the democratic process. So as you look at some of these key battleground states and, and sort of a party that's stuck with their leader, how do you see this playing out? And did Jerry Baker get it right there? I like Jerry and agree with Jerry a lot. I wouldn't go that far. I think that we, we find ourselves at an unprecedented moment. Uh, I, 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 like a lot of Democrats uh, and like a lot of Americans, was shocked by what happened last Thursday. And I, I don't think that Jerry's point there is one that uh, is completely out of bounds, but I wouldn't frame it quite that way. So Democrats uh, have a choice to make. Uh, do you travel down a path, travel down a, a risky path with a candidate um, that has uh, given the American people a vision and a, 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 an idea of whom he is that can't be erased. I hope that you, over the next three or four months, uh, can demonstrate that he has the physical and mental acuity. Uh, I don't think you do. I think a lot of people are thinking you don't do that. And I think you have to think long and hard about it. And I wouldn't be surprised uh, if Democrats, if we decided that we, we were not going to do that. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It's interesting. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good to see you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.